Today, I'm going to show you exactly how to start a six-figure sticker business completely from scratch. From showing you how to get ideas to a complete product ready to post online, I'm going to show you everything. You don't have to have any previous skills or design capabilities. All you need is a computer with an internet connection. Today, we're going over how to get repeatable ideas, how to turn those ideas into stickers, check those stickers for trademark infringement, prepare the stickers for sale, and then mock up the stickers so that they're ready to list online. If that's something that interests you and you wanna learn how to start a six-figure sticker business, I'd encourage you to watch the entire video. We're going to leverage AI to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us, and if that sounds intimidating, don't worry because I'm gonna walk us through every single step of the way. These are some sample stickers that I've just made using this exact process, so you could expect to get some similar results. You can download these stickers using the link below this video to check them out for yourself, but otherwise, let's get right into it. To have a successful business, each step of the process has to be repeatable, including the creativity. So here's the whole process that we're gonna be using. Starting with idea generation. You can sign up to use ChatGPT completely free using a Gmail address in under a minute. When you first log in, you're gonna be prompted with this window that just says ChatGPT, and we're gonna to wanna to click on the text input at the bottom. I'm just going to ask for a list of image-only stickers that I can sell. Once I enter the prompt, it'll begin typing out a list in real time. From there, we could ask it to make each idea more detailed. As you can see, this method is much faster than searching what other people are selling on platforms like Etsy, Redbubble, or Society6, and you don't have to worry about copying their ideas. Obviously, if it gives us any ideas relating to Disney or Pixar or any kind of trademarked idea, then we're going to have to completely ignore it. All right, I think for this challenge, we are going to do some cartoon animals just for the example in this video. Now, hopefully you can see how you can use this tool to remove basically any creative blocks that you might have. But if you already have fresh ideas, then you can probably just skip this entire step. So with our list of ideas, let's generate some images for them. To do this, we're using an AI called Midjourney. Midjourney is an image generation AI where we give it a prompt from the previous step and it'll generate an image for us based on that prompt. You can sign up completely free and then pay later if you decide to start selling the art. To use Midjourney, you'll also have to have the Discord app installed on your computer, which means you'll also need a Discord account which is free. But signing up for Discord is beyond the scope of this video. Once you have Discord opened on your computer and you've signed into Midjourney, you want to navigate to the Midjourney bot. Now in here, you can see all of those stickers that I just showed you at the beginning of the video. And this is exactly where I generated all of them. And the good thing about using this tool is it literally requires no skill. So let me show you how to do it. Right down here at the bottom in the message section, you want to click and you want to start your prompt by hitting the forward slash key and then choose this imagine prompt. Right here, it'll open up a little prompt box where we can type in exactly what we want. Now we could create any kind of art that we want, but we're creating specifically stickers today. So we have to create a prompt so Midjourney knows exactly what we want. Here are some example stickers that I generated so you can see how the prompts work. The AI knows the difference between things like pizza or pizza slice, and it knows to add different attributes based on keywords that you add at the beginning. So if you make it cute, it'll add things like a little face to whatever you're designing. This can be really useful if you wanna add things like a hat to one of your characters or little details that you wanna throw in to make each sticker a little more unique. But we're gonna keep it simple for this video. So ChatGPT gave us this idea for a bear eating honey. So I thought it would be a cool idea to try making a panda eating some bamboo. So back in the Discord app in our Midjourney server, we're going to tell the bot exactly what we want. So in this little prompt section down at the bottom, we're going to type in a cute panda eating bamboo sticker cartoon style. And we're just gonna hit enter and let it generate the image. Now I'm probably gonna speed this part up because it might take a second for it to generate the image. Okay, there we go. So now we have four iterations of the prompt we gave it. Now, immediately, what I like to do is I like to hit this re-roll button three times, and this will give me three more generations with four more options to choose from each. These are okay images. I don't love any of them, so I'm gonna try it without the eating bamboo part and see what we get. So even though I didn't love all of these ones up top, honestly, they are still fairly usable and you probably could still make a profit selling them. These re-rolls are a little bit more promising, so let's see what we get here. Okay, great, so these guys look pretty sad. 
Uh, these ones actually look pretty good. So I definitely think that these are gonna be usable. Now, if we like a specific image, but it isn't quite right, we can actually get more variations of that specific image. The image on the top left is number one. This is number two, three, and then the bottom right is gonna be number four. And we can use these controls down at the bottom to essentially upscale them and make them larger or create more variations of the image. So if we want more variations of this image, since this is the third image, we're going to hit V3, hit submit, and we should get four more variations of that same sticker. But up here, I really like this one, so I'm gonna upscale it and we're gonna hit U3 to make it a bigger version so that we can actually use it to sell as a sticker. But while those are generating, here's a few more prompts that you could use to generate similar images, and you would just want to switch out the underlined word. So we created the variations of this panda down here, and we actually got four more. And I think I like this top right one the most, so since that's the second image, we will upscale number two. And a lot of it is just waiting because uh, Mid Journey does take a second to generate the art. But uh, if you compare it to how long it would take to create this by hand, uh, honestly, there's not really a comparison here. So now you can see we have a nice upscaled, larger version of the sticker that we chose above. Now to download this, all we're gonna do is click on the image and click open in browser. This will open it up in your chosen web browser. And from here, we can just right click it and save image as. And from here, you just wanna save it somewhere where you'll easily be able to find it. And then we'll just go through and do this for every single sticker that we generated. Now, I should mention that even though we did upscale this image, we could upscale it again by using the beta upscale redo. Now the issue with this is sometimes it creates a lot of distortion and it kind of warps the image. It makes it look super odd. So since we're selling such small stickers, we don't need to upscale them past this point. And now that we have all of the images downloaded, we're literally halfway done. But before we move on too much further, we should check these images to see if there's any kind of copyright or trademark. Now, the best way that I know how to do this is to start a brand new Google search and click on this little camera icon. From here, we can choose upload a file and we can choose one of our images. Let's choose this one. What this is, is basically a reverse Google search and it's going to see if it matches this panda anywhere else online. So we can scroll through and see all of the results and we just essentially need to make sure that Midjourney isn't copying anyone directly. Honestly, the more results that it comes up with, the better because that means that it's sampling little pieces of each image and creating its own mashup. So in my opinion, the more images you see on the side here, the safer you probably are. We can also click the find image source button and this should tell you if there's an actual image that Mid Journey just copied, but this hardly ever happens. I haven't actually had any experiences where Mid Journey is creating images that are too similar to a different artist's online. We'll also need to make sure that we're paying for the Mid Journey commercial license, which as I mentioned is about $30 a month if we're going to be selling these images. Now, this has worked for me, but if you have any more questions or concerns, then you should definitely contact a professional. I am in no way licensed or qualified to give you trademark or copyright advice. At the moment, I don't know of a better way to check the trademarks on these images. So for now, I think a reverse Google search is going to be your best bet. This should keep you out of most trouble and it's worked for me so far. Okay, but back to all of the exciting stuff. So the next step that we need to do is remove this background from the sticker so that we can actually sell the sticker itself without all this gray area around it. Now to do this, we're going to use either Photoshop or Photo P. If you have Photoshop, then great, you should definitely use it. But in case you don't, I'm gonna show you a free alternative that you can use called Photo P. So to find Photo P is again, completely free. You'll just want to go to photop.com. And essentially, this is almost all of the functionality that you can find within Photoshop in a web-based version. I'm going to use Photo P so that you can follow along without having to have Photoshop. So the first thing that we wanna do is create a new project. And we wanna make sure that it's set to 10 inches by 10 inches with 300 pixels per inch or DPI. From there, we could just hit create and it should bring up a blank canvas. Now from here, all we're gonna do is just drag in one of our images that we just created in Mid Journey. So here, we're just going to drag him in. You can see he's a little small right now. So we're just going to hold option and scale it up to the full size of the canvas and hit enter. Now, all we really need to do is just remove the background. So I'm going to select the quick selection tool right here 
and then just to click on our panda. Now what we wanna do is just zoom in and check around the border to make sure that there's no serious errors here. Now, most of the time, Midjourney actually creates images that have a white border around them to give it a sticker aesthetic. But we want to remove that for right now. So when we select, we just wanna make sure that it's selecting our image and not the white area around the image. Once we have a good selection, we're going to come up to the select menu and we're going to hit modify and we want to smooth it out. From here, I'm going to do about six pixels and hit okay. And then we're going to go back to select, modify, contract, and we're going to shrink it by about five pixels and hit okay. This way it will shrink into the black border and it won't be getting hardly any of the white. That's gonna make our stickers really clean and easy to use. Okay, once we have this, we have to hit control or command J, depending on if you're on a PC or a Mac. I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna hit command J, and you'll see that over here in our layers tab, it has taken the, our selection and created it into its own layer. So if I hide these other two layers, you can see that now we have these perfectly cut out panda sticker. This is super cool. From here, we just have to go to file, export as PNG, hit save, and it'll save it to our computer. So now you can see we've successfully removed the white border that went all the way around him and the gray background. If you have regular Photoshop, it's probably a lot faster and you'll get some better selections, but this method is completely free and totally usable. And now our sticker's completely ready for selling, so we could list it somewhere online and wait for the sales to come in. But in my opinion, making mockups really brings your images to life. Now, if we're going to sell our designs on a platform like Redbubble, Society6, or even a platform like Printify, then those platforms might already generate you a mockup that you can use. Another option is to just use the mockup that Midjourney creates for you. A lot of times you'll get an image like this that looks like a sticker mockup, or you might get really detailed mockups like these that you could list your products and sell them this way as well. If you are going to use these mid-journey mockups, then you'll still have to remove the image from the background so that you can list it and sell it and print it as a sticker, but you could definitely use that kind of image as a listing image to get your products to sell. The next option is obviously place it, which we could use, but it's really not my favorite because of how long it takes to use and you have to pay their monthly subscription fee. Another option is to look at the best selling types of mockups and see if we can buy a similar mockup on a platform like Creative Market or Etsy. You can see this mockup here is about $14 and we could reuse it over and over and over again. This very successful shop that has likely done close to half a million dollars in sales uses essentially the same mockup over and over again. Or the best option is because you've watched this full video, I'm going to leave a download link for this mockup that I made so you can download it and use it as much as you want. Now, I'm going to switch to Photoshop to edit this mockup, but you can absolutely edit this completely free in that application Photo P. So to make changes, if we want to change the background color, we can double click right here, and this will bring up a color picker, and essentially we can choose any color that we want as the background but I like blue, so I'm gonna keep it as blue for right now. We can also add this adjustment layer to add some lighting effects if you like that, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it off. Next, we'll wanna double click this replace design layer. Just double click the image and you'll be brought up with this place where you can just put your sticker down. So we're gonna hide this layer by just clicking the little eyeball. Again, all of these steps are exactly the same in Photo P. And from here, we're just going to drag in our panda image. We're going to hit the check mark or hit place and hit the command S to save it. Now, as you can see, it's updated in real time. And now we have a perfect sticker mockup for our panda. So I just changed the background to a bamboo background and gave it a little bit of a blur so that the sticker kind of stands out more. Obviously those steps are optional. So all you have left to do is come to file, export, and do a quick export as PNG, save the file. And right here, as you can see, we have a full screen version of our sticker and I'll even put it on the video as well so you can see just how good it looks. The other benefit to using this mockup that I provided as a download link down below is that I'm releasing a Photoshop script that will essentially take all of your designs and place them on all of your mockups automatically without you having to do anything. And that's essentially the entire process. We started by getting an idea using ChatGPT. We then took that idea and plugged it into Midjourney to generate some great art. From there, we downloaded the art and it looked like this. We then used a free program called Photopea to remove all of the background 
and this is your sticker that's ready to sell anywhere online. Then we created a custom mockup that looks like that, that looks way better than the default one. And honestly, I feel like this, with a few more stickers like it, would sell like crazy. Now, the quantity of designs you post will directly correlate to the amount of sales you get. I can say from experience, after doing well over seven figures with print on demand, that the more designs you post, the more money you make. So if you are serious about doing this, then let me show you a few more bonus tips to help you leverage your time to get even more designs out of this. The first bonus tip is to stay super organized. So once we've cut out the backgrounds from all of our images, I like to bring them into a program called Figma. So once you've downloaded Figma and created your first whiteboard, you'll be able to drag your stickers directly in from your desktop. From here, we can organize all of our designs into panda designs, pizza designs, whales, or anything else we create. This will save us a ton of time when we're ready to start uploading our stickers because we can do them in batches. So when we're ready to upload all of our pandas, we can select them all, export them, and we only have to get title, tags, and SEO once, and then we can just apply it to all of our designs. This also means if you ever have to make an edit or find one of these original stickers ever again, they're all just saved in the big whiteboard, so you can find them pretty easily and make any modifications you need to right inside of Figma. The next bonus tip is to multiply all of your designs. Now, there's three main designs that you can get out of each idea. So for this idea, it's someone who likes pizza. And as you can see, I've used the same graphic with text, I've used just the graphic, and I've used just text. Now, honestly, these are three sticker ideas that you could use right away. And we've only used one text idea and one graphic, and we've gotten three designs out of it. From here, hopefully you can see that you could change out the phrase, or you could add modifications to the image and the phrase, and you can get a ton of variations out of the same idea. Doing something like this to multiply your ideas is going to maximize your time efficiency because you never really know if someone who likes pizza is looking for a sticker, if they want it with words, without words, or if they want just the words. So you might as well create all three. Now you can actually use ChatGPT and ask it for some text prompts to go along with each one of your sticker ideas. And doing this all inside of Figma allows you to edit these text prompts super easily, as well as export all of your images together. And because Figma is a big cloud-based whiteboard, it doesn't take up any room on your computer to store all of your files. Not only that, but if your hard drive ever fails or you lose your computer, you can access all of your designs through the web, through Figma's website. Now, the third and final bonus tip is using Figma allows us to take advantage of bulk uploads. So I already mentioned the title, tags, and SEO, but doing this method will also allow you to take advantage of my automatic Printify uploader that I'm releasing once I hit 100,000 subscribers and once I finish coding it. And even without the uploader, this is by far the fastest method. It's so much faster to upload 20 pizza designs at the same time, instead of trying to get keywords, titles, and tags for 20 different ideas. So using Figma allows us to export all of the stickers we made in batches, run the Photoshop mockup script to automate the process of making mockups, and then with this Printify uploader I'm working on, you give it a list of keywords, it'll upload each product to Printify, and give it a unique title, including the name of the design. But even until I release that, this is still the fastest method. All right, I know this is a longer video than usual. I hope you found a lot of value in it. I'd really appreciate it if you shared this video with someone else who might find value in it as well. All right, I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.